Hello everyone, this is lecture 18, Basis of a Vector Space. So far, we have learned two important concepts of a vector space that are a spanning set and linear independence. So a spanning set is a set of vectors that spans or helped build the entire vector space under two operations, scalar multiplication and vector addition. What if we want to go the other way? Now, the question is, can we find a set of vectors that describe the space? Then the set of vectors that we look for is called a basis for a vector space. So now in order to show that a set of vector is a basis for a vector space, we need to show two things. First, the set has to span the entire vector space. Right? That means we need to show the set of vector is a spanning set. And second, the set is linearly independent. Uh, that means in this lecture, we're going to use the concepts in lecture 16 and lecture 17 as foundations to build a new concept called basis. All right. So again, the learning objective for this lecture is to determine if a set is a basis for a vector space. So I'm going to show you the definitions of a basis of a vector space, and then I'm going to work on some example, then move on to some properties related to basis of a vector space. All right. So first, the definitions of a basis. So a set. of vectors s equal to v1, v2, up to vn um, in a vector space v is a basis for v when the condition below are true So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, to show that a vector, a set of vector is a basis for a vector space, we need two things to show two things that the set S spans the entire vector space and S is linearly independent. So there are two conditions here that is S spans V. And the second thing is S is linearly independent. Uh, so to show that the set S span V, that means you need to show that um, for any vector V in the vector space V, uh, the vector V can be written as linear combinations of V1, V2 up to Vn, right? So that's show S span V. And to show that S is linearly independent, that means the linear combinations, uh, C1 times V1 plus C2 times V2 plus up to Cn times Vn is equal to zero vector. And it only holds when the coefficient C1, C2 up to Cn equal to zero, okay? Um, you will see in actions in the example how this going to play out, how we're going to show S spans V and S is linearly independent. All right. Um, so I have two more notes here. That is, if a vector space V has a basis with a finite number of vectors, uh, V is called finite dimensional. So if a vector space V has a basis with a finite number of vectors, then V is um, finite dimensional. Um, otherwise, we call V is infinite dimensional. Uh, 
All right. So, um, so that's basically the definition, the basis for a vector space. Um, the next uh, few things that we're going to do is to play around with some examples. All right. So in the first example, we want to show that the set consists of two standard unit vector, you know, one zero and zero one is the spaces for the two dimensional vector space. All right. So again, by definition of basis uh, for vector space, we need to show two things. The first one is that S spans the entire uh, vector space. And the second thing is S is linearly independent. All right. So the given set is consists of two standard unit vector, one, zero, and zero, one. So this set span the entire two dimensional vector space. So, so the first thing we show that S spans V, right? So the set S equal to one, zero, comma, zero, one, span R2 um, because any vector, right? If you consider any vector U of the form U1, U2, because it's a two dimensional, uh, vector space, um, the vector just needs to consist two components, U1 and U2. Right? So this in R2 can be written as, right, so U equal to um, U1 comma U2 or U1 times one comma zero plus U2 times zero comma one um, or Right by the standard unit vector notation, you can write that u1 times i plus u2 times j, or as a more general form of the standard unit vector is that u1 times e1 plus u2 times e2. All right. Um, so this showed that um, you can be written as linear combinations of the vectors in the set S, right? So that showed that at span the entire R2. Okay, so we just showed the first thing. Now we move on to show that S is a linearly independent, right? So uh, the set S is also linearly independent um, because we have that um, C1 times one zero plus C2 times zero one equal to the zero vector, okay? So we want to show that right, the linear combinations equal to zero vector holds only when C1 equal to zero, C2 equal to zero, so on and so forth. Right. So from this setup, we can come, um, we can obtain this system of linear equations, uh, or we can write that, um, so C1 plus zero times C2 equal to zero, and the second equation of the system is zero C1 plus C2 equal to zero, so from the system of equations, we obtain that C1 equal to C2 equal to zero. And therefore we just show that S is a linearly independent set, right? So, um, uh, so therefore, right, S is a basis for R2, my right? so for vector space R2 or for two-dimensional vector space. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, in this particular case, S is called the standard basis for R2. So let me make a quick note here. Right? So S is a standard. So is the standard basis. Uh, for R2. Okay, so that is two-dimensional vector space. Now we move on to do a very similar problem, but instead um, we're going to deal with three-dimensional vector space. So given the set of vectors S, 
equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So these three vectors are the standard unit vectors in R3. Right? Now we're going to show that S is a basis for R3. Right? Again, we want to show two things. First, S is a uh, S spans the entire vector space. And then we want to show S is linearly independent. Okay. Um, so the procedure is going to be very similar to example one. We see that the set S span R3 uh, because for any vector U, uh, for U equal to U1, U2, U3, uh, vector U can be written as um, u equal to u1, u2, u3, or u1 times 1, 0, 0, plus u2 times 0, 1, 0, plus u3 times 0, 0, 1. Okay, so, um, so u1 can be written as, uh, sorry, so u1 times 1, 0, 0 can be written as u1 times i. The middle term can be written as u2 times j. And the last term is u3 times k, right? Or for a more general form or the general notations of the standard unit vectors, and you can write u1 times e1 plus u2 times e2 plus u3 times e3, right? So that show that S spans the three-dimensional vector space. Okay. Now, the second thing we need to show that S is linearly independent, right? So in this case, S is linearly independent because if you have C1 times E1 plus C2 times E2 plus C3 times E3 equal to a zero vector, right? Um, or you can write C1 times 1, 0, 0, plus C2 times 0, 0, 1, plus C3 times 0, 0, 1, sorry. C2 times 0, 1, 0, C3 times 0, 0, 1, and equal to the zero vector. Um, and from here, um, we can write down a system of linear equations. Um, or we can write C1 plus 0, C2 plus 0, C3 equal to 0. And then C0, C1 plus C2 plus 0, C3 equal to 0. And the last equation we can get is 0, C1 plus 0, C2 plus C3 equal to 0. Right, so from this system of linear equations, we can show that C1 equal to C2 equal to C3 equal to zero. That's just a trivial solutions. Um, and therefore I show that S is linearly independent. Right. And therefore we can conclude that S is a basis for R3. Right, so in this particular case, um, and uh, more specifically, S, right, given um, in this form with these three standard unit vectors, is the standard basis for three-dimensional vector space. Mm -hmm. So more specifically, uh, let me use red pen here, S is the standard basis. Uh, R3. Um, so as you can see, um, if a set consists of two, um, in R2, the set consists of two standard unit vector, that set is a standard basis for R2. Um, in R3, if the set consists of standard unit vectors, um, uh, then S is considered as the basis uh, the standard basis for R3. Now, in general, right, so, so in general, 
the set S consists of this standard unit vector one, zero, zero of zero, uh, zero, one, zero. up to zero, 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 one is the standard um, basis for Rn. Okay, so if the set consists of all the n-dimensional uh, standard unit vectors, then the set is the standard basis for Rn. And you can show in the similar manner that we did in example one and example two. Okay, so because we have standard unit vector in the set, that's why the set is uh, considered as the standard basis for the corresponding vector space. Now, what if we don't have standard unit vectors? Can we still find the basis for a vector space? Right. So that's the um, that's the idea for the next two examples, right? That we have a non-standard basis for R2 and non-standard basis for R3. Okay. Now in example three, right, we want to show that the set consists of two vectors, one one and one negative one spans uh, R2 and then determine whether the set is linearly independent or linearly dependent, right? With these two points combined, we can see that as we want to show that is as a basis um, for R2, even as does not have the standard unit vectors. All right, so first to show that the set span R2, we need to show that for any vector u in R2, you can read can be written as a linear combinations of the two vector in the set S, right? So in this case, uh, the vector is one, one, I call that V1. The vector one, negative one, I call that V2. Right. So to show that um, S spans R2, um, we need to show that for any vector, V equal to V1, V2, in R2, uh, V can be written as a linear combination of V1, vector V1 and vector V2, given that vector V1 is equal to one one and vector V2 is equal to one negative one. So we can say that is right. So V one comma V two equal to C one times um C one times vector one one plus C two times vector one negative one. And from here, you similar to the last two examples, you can write the system of linear equations, right? That is a C1, or one times C1 plus C2 equal to V1, and C1 minus C2 equal to V2. Um, so from the system of linear equations, we want to show that if the system has a unique solutions or not, right? Because if the system has a unique solutions, then the vector V can be written as linear combinations of the two vectors V1 and V2, vector V1 and vector V2. All right. Um, and to show that the system has a unique solutions, we need to calculate the determinant of the coefficient matrix. So the the determinant of the coefficient matrix is right. Um, is one, 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 negative one, 
Right, if you do this two by two determinant, you're going to have this equal to zero, um, equal to two, which is different from, sorry, negative. Um, let me be careful here. Uh, is equal to um, negative two, sorry. Um, and this is different from zero, right? Um, because the determinant is different from zero, you can find the inverse of the coefficient matrix and therefore the system has a unique solutions. Right, so then the system has a unique solutions. And when the system has a unique solutions, that means you can find the, ex the explicit value for C1 and C2 given v1 and v2. Um, first, we can, the vector u, we can say that vector v, sorry, can be written as a linear combination. of v1, vector v1, and vector v2, right? Um, so therefore, we just show that this part of the problem, we just show that as span the entire uh, R2. All right, now we're gonna move on to show that um, if the set is linearly independent or linearly dependent, right? Uh, to show that S is a um, and is linearly independent. Uh, we do right. So first, we form the this equation. So C one times V one plus C two times V two equal to the zero vector. Right. So C1 times V1, um, so vector V1 is equal to 1, comma 1, vector V2 is 1, negative 1, equal to the zero vector. And from here, again, we're going to form a system of linear equations. We get C1 plus C2 equal to 0, and C1 minus C2 equal to 0. Um, and you can, this is a very simple system of linear equation to solve, right? And um, you can use either a substitution method or elimination, elimination method, or you can use Python to aid with the calculations. And you see that C1 equal to C2 equal to zero. So that is uh, to show that S is a linearly independent set. Right, so S is linearly independent. Right. So with these two points combined together, we can see that S is a basis for a vector space R2. Right. So this also shows that S is a basis for a uh, for R two for the vector space R two. All right. Now that for two dimensional vector space, moving on to a non standard basis for a three dimensional vector space. Again, similar questions that the given the uh, the set of vector s my right, consists of the vector v1 uh, 1 2 3 0 1 2 and negative 2 0 1 we want to show that uh, s span the entire uh, three dimensional vector space and later on we want to determine if the set is linearly independent or not all right um so first let me name um the vectors in the set s right so let me so this is vector v1 this is vector v2 this is vector v3 okay so to show that s spans r3 we show that for any vector u 
or vector v for that matter. So vector u and vector v or vector w for that matter. It's not really, it's just a dummy variable, right? You can switch to any letter you like, right? So in this case, uh, to uh, avoid confusions, um, I want to use vector u instead of vector v, right? So to show for to show that as spent R3, we want to show that for any vector u equal to u1, u2, and u3, um, u can be written as a linear combination. Of the three vectors v1, v2, and v3. All right, so that is, um, so you have C1 times uh, vector V1 plus C2 times vector V2 plus C3 times vector V3 um, equal to vector U. All right, um, so that is C1 times 1, 2, 3 plus C2 times 0, 1, 2 plus C3 times uh, negative 2, 0, 1 equal to u1, u2, and u3. Okay. Uh, so next, we want to sh rewrite this uh, equation as a system of linear equation. So this uh, equation is the vector uh, equation form. Um, and now we turn this into a system of linear equations. So we get c1 plus 0, c2 minus 2c3 equal to u1. And then 2c1 plus c2 plus 0c3 equal to u2. Um, and the last equation is 3c1 plus 2c2 plus c3 equal to u3. Okay. So remember, we cannot solve the C1, C2, and C3 explicitly due to the fact that we don't know the exact value of U1 and U2 and U3, but we can. That means that if you give me any particular values for U1, U2, and U3, I would be able to solve the C1, C2, and C3. We cannot do that like in this example because we don't know the exact values of U1 and U2 and U3. But in case you know the value of u1, u2, and u3, we can always find the value of c1, c2, and c3. So that's the that's why we just want to calculate the determinant of the coefficient matrix. Um, because when the coefficients, uh, sorry, the determinant of the coefficient matrix is different from zero, um, then we can just conclude that um, um, the system has a unique solution and therefore, the big idea is to see if you can be written as a linear combinations of the three vectors, v1, v2, and v3, right? So if you um, do a quick calculations, uh, so for the determinant of the coefficient matrix, Right, so the determinant is 1, 0, negative 2. This is 2, 1, 0. This is 3, 2, 1. So the determinant is equal to negative 1, which is different from 0. Um, so it shows that the system has a unique solution. So the system has a unique solution. And therefore, like us, um, U can be written as a linear combination of V1, V2, and V3. And therefore, we just shows that um, the set of vector, um, the set S span the entire three-dimensional vector space. Now, the next thing we need to show that we want to show if the set is linear independent or linear dependent set or not. Okay, uh, so to show S is linearly independent,
uh, we first form. Now you have C1 times vector V1 plus C2 times vector V2 plus C3 times vector V3 equal to the zero vector. Or you have C1 times the vector one, two, three plus C2 times the vector zero, one, two plus C3 times the vector negative two, zero, one equal to the zero vector. Um, and from this e vector equations, we can form this system of linear equations. In this case, the system with three linear equations with three unknowns, right? Or you can write C1 plus zero C2 minus two C3 equal to zero. And second equation is two C1 plus C2 plus zero C3 equal to zero. And the last equation is 3C1 plus 2C2 plus C3 equal to zero. And again, from here, you can use a substitutions method, eliminations method, or Python to it with calculations. Um, so um, quickly, if you want to do uh, use Python, what you do is you can turn this into an augmented matrix. Uh, And you get this is one at zero, negative two, and the right hand side is all zero. Right? Um, then two, one, zero, and three, two, one. Um, you input this into Python and let it run and see what you're going to get. Right. So turn out you're going to get a this reduce row echelon form of one zero zero. Zero zero one zero 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 one zero, right? So this shows that C one equal to C two equal to C three equal to zero, and therefore you can say that S is linearly independent, right? Because S span the entire vector space R R three, and S is linearly independent. You can uh, conclude that S is a basis for R3. Right. So here, S is a basis for R3. All right. Um, so hopefully up to this point, you can get a gist of um, basis for a vector space. Right. So again, to quickly capture what we learned so far in this lecture, that um, in order to find the basis of a vector space, you need to show two things. S spans the entire vector space, and S is linearly independent. Okay. Um, moving on to the next concept, that is the uniqueness of the basis representations. So that is whatever you have in uh, whatever you have for a basis. Um, there's only one way to express the basis of a vector space, right? So in theorem one, um, we're going to talk about the unitness of the basis of representations. Um, so the theorem say that If you have a set of vectors and the set um, of vectors is the basis for the vector space, then every vector in V can be written in one and only one way as a linear combinations of vectors in S. Right. So that means that the representations of the linear combinations, there's only one way that you can write um, the linear combinations. All right, so let's write down the theorem. I'm gonna show you the proof of the theorem. And then we're going to work with one example to show that the, um, the, the representation of the basis is on one and only one. Okay. Um, so if S equal to V1, V2, up to Vn is a basis for a vector space, V, then every vector in V 
can be written um, in one and only one uh, way as linear combinations. of vectors in S. Right. Um, so um, to, to capture this uh, theorem, again, what you do to show that when you have a S as a basis for a vector space is that uh, S spans the entire vector space. So that is, is can be written as a linear combination of all, given a vector in V, right? let's say U, vector U is um, the vector in the vector space V. Um, you can be written as a linear combination of the vector in S. And there is only one way to do that. That's, that's the idea of the theorem. Okay. Um, so for the proof, um, there are two things that we're going to, uh, to prove um, for this theorem. So the first one is to show the existence of the, um, of the statement. Right? So uh, that is S spans V. Right, so that is we want to show that a vector u in the vector space v can be written as a linear combinations of the vectors in S. Right, and then later on the second part is to prove the uniqueness. That is, there is only one and one way. There's only one and only one way um, that uh, the vector can be written as a linear combinations of the vectors in S. Right, so two part the existence and the um, the uniqueness. Part. So for existence, uh, right, so from the theorem, you say that S is a basis for the vector space V. That means S span, uh, there's two things when you have S as the basis of the vector space, that S spans the entire vector space, and S is a linear uh, independent. Right. So since S spans Vs. Right. Um, there exists an arbitrary vector U in V such that um, U can be written as a linear combination of the vector in S. So C, U equal to C1 times V1 plus C2 times V2 up to Cn times Vn, right? So this indicate that um, S spans V, right? So there exists such things, right? So that is the existence of the statement. Now for the uniqueness, so uniqueness, Um, so what we do is that not only that you can be written as or expressed as the linear combinations of the vector in S in this form, let's say you can be written as a linear combinations of the vectors in S in a different form, right? So suppose U in V can be expressed or can be written as the linear combinations of the vectors in S um, in the following manner, instead of the coefficient C1, C2 of the Cn, what you do is you have D1 times V1 plus D2 times V2 up to D sub N times V sub N. So let's say you have two different ways to express U as linear combinations of um, vectors in S. Right. Now, what you do for this two equations is that you're going to subtract one from the other. Right? So let me go into do, let's say this is equation one, this is equation two. So we let uh, equation one minus equation two, we obtain. So on the left hand side of the two equations, right, you have the same uh, vector as u. Right? So if the u minus u becomes zero vector um, equal to, now we're going to consider the corresponding vectors. Right? So uh, c1v1 minus d1v1 
C2, V2, minus D2, V2, so on and so forth, up to the last component, that is CN, VN, minus DN, VN. Right? So you have C1, V1, minus D1, V1, plus C2, V2, minus D2, V2, up to CN, VN, uh, minus DN, VN. Um, now, on the right-hand side, V1 is the common factor for the first two terms. Um, V2 is the uh, common factor for this uh, two components, and Vn is the uh, common factor for the last two components of the right-hand side. So what you get is zero vectors equal to C1 minus D1 times V1 plus C2 minus D2 times V2 plus up to Cn minus Dn times Vn. Uh, so sin S is linearly independent because again, S is the basis for a vector space V. Um, there's only one solution that um, um, V1, V2 or the vectors in S can be written as a linear combinations. Um, so uh, since, S is linearly independent. We get that C1 minus D1 equal to zero, C2 minus D2 equal to zero, um, and Cn minus Dn equal to zero, right? So the only thing that can happen for this vector equation is the coefficient equal to zero, right? So this shows that C1 equal to D1, C2 equal to D2, and Cn equal to Dn. Right. Uh, so therefore, uh, right, so the coefficient has to be the same. That is, um, there is only one way that you can express the vector U as a linear combinations of, um, of all the vectors in S. Right. So this means, that U has only one representation for the basis S. Right. So again, U, there's only one representation U, uh, representation for U of this one way to express U as the linear combinations of the vectors in S. Okay. So that the uniqueness of the basis of representations. Now let's take a look at the following example. Um, so in this example, uh, we say that let u is e let u equal to u one, u two, u three. So this is three dimensional vectors, um, and you want to show that uh, the equations or u can be expressed as the linear combinations of the vectors in S. And the vectors in S are V1, V2, and V3. For V1 equal to 1, 2, 3, V2 is equal to 0, 1, 2, and V3 is equal to negative 2, 0, 1. Right. So we, we showed this part earlier in example four, um, but we going to dive a little bit into more detail of how you could obtain a unit a uh, unique representation of a vector in terms of a linear combination of the other vectors in the basis S. Okay, um, so just like what we did in example four, what we do is that, right, so U is in the three-dimensional vector space R3. Now U can be written as a linear combinations of V1, V2, and V3, right? So you get that U in R3, can be written as, right, so u equal to c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus c3 v3, right, for u is equal to u1, u2, u3, equal to c1 times 1, 2, 3, plus c2 times 0, 1, 2, plus c3 times negative 2, 0, 1. Okay. Um, so just like before, from here, from the uh, vector equations, we can rewrite this as a system of linear equations. So that is, you get 
Um, so C1 plus 0 C2 minus 2 C3 equal to U1. Uh, 2 C1 plus C2 plus 0 C3 equal to U2. 3 C1 plus 2 C2 plus C3 equal to U3. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned in example two and uh, sorry, example three and example four, because you don't know the exact value of U1, U2, U3, so you cannot solve for C1, C2, C3. You don't know the exact value of C1, C2, and C3 in this manner. But there's a way to show that, yes, if given a value for U1, U2, and U3, you can explicitly write down the value of C1, C2, and C3. And that is to find the determinant of the coefficient matrix. Okay. Um, when the determinant of the coefficient matrix is different from zero, that is the matrix, the invertible, uh, is invertible. Right? When matrix is invertible, that means you can find A inverse. When you find A inverse, you can find the solution of C1 and C2 and C3. Okay. Um, so we did the determinant of this coefficient matrix in example four, and it's equal to negative one already. So there is a, uh, the system has a unique solution, right? Um, so since the determinant of the coefficient matrix is uh, different from zero. The system has a unique solution. Right. Um, so you, again, you can solve for C1, C2, and C3, even though there's no um, exact values for U1, and U2, and U3. So that is C1 can be written in terms of U1, U2, U3. C2 and C3 can also be expressed in the same manner, right? Um, so I'm going to skip all the formality. If you want to use, the, um, to use Python to aid with the calculations, you can. But what I'm going to do is that, um, right, from the system, it can be written as um, this matrix vector form. That is 1, 0, negative 2, 2, 1, 0, 3, 2, 1. And you multiply with C1, C2, C3. And this equal to U1, U2, U3. All right. Um, so the determinant of this matrix is equal to negative one that is different from zero. So that is the matrix is invertible. Right? So you can find C1, C2, C3, and this is going to be equal to the inverse of this matrix. Right? You take the inverse of this matrix and multiply with U1, U2, and U3. Right? Um, in Python, uh, you can find the inverse of this matrix by the setting um, of the augmented matrix of the form. Right? So A for the coefficient matrix and vertical line, and this is identity matrix. So it's in this case, the three by three identity matrix. And you use Python and it should give you the inverse of, uh, of, the, of the matrix A. Okay. Um, so I'm going to skip that and just write down the solution for C1, C2, and C3, because the idea is to see the unique representations of the basis. Okay. Um, assume that you know how to calculate the inverse of the matrix. Here, C1 is equal to negative U1 plus 4U2 minus 2U3. C2 is equal to 2U1 minus 7u2 plus 4u3, and c3 is equal to negative u1 plus 2u2 minus u3. Right. Uh, so again, all of this coefficients, negative 1, 4, negative 2, or 2, negative 7, 4, or negative 1, 2, negative uh, 1, can be obtained from finding the inverse of the matrix A, right? from finding this particular matrix. Okay. 
Um, so again, we don't know the exact value of U1, U2, and U3 in this manner, in this particular example, but what if we know the exact value, right? Let's say for example, U1 is equal to one, U2 is equal to zero, and U3 is equal to zero, right? For example, you let that u1 equal to 1, u2 is equal to 0, and u3 equal to 0. Then you have that c1 is going to be equal to negative 1, c2 is equal to positive 2, and c3 is equal to negative 1. Right. So therefore, u equal to 1, 0, 0 can be written as a linear combination of the vectors in the set S as negative V1 plus 2V2 minus V3. And this is the unique representation for this particular vector. Right. If you have a different vector, let's say you have 1, 3, 1, something like that, you have a different representations of U, right? Different from, from uh, this one from this but that representation is also unique. Okay, um, so that is the unique representation, the basis of for a vector space. Now we're going to move on to two order theorem. Um, and I'm gonna conclude this two theorem, theorem two and theorem three into some note later on. But in theorem two is say um, the relationship between basis and linear dependence, right? So if S is a basis for a vector space V, then every set containing more than N vectors in V is linearly dependent, right? So the set is a basis of a vector space. It'll tell you that you have enough vectors in the set. When you put more vector than, uh, more than the requirement, then it's become redundant. When it's become redundant, is become linearly dependent because one uh, of the vector will depend on the other vectors in the set. That's the ideas of theorem two. Uh, again, the idea of theorem two is that you don't want uh, um, more than enough vectors in the set. Okay. Um, number three is that the number of vectors in the basics uh, basis. So if a vector space V has one basis with N vectors, then every basis of, of four V has N vectors, right? Um, so for two dimensional case, right? In example one, you have a standard unit vector uh, in, the, uh, in the set, right? It's form the standard basis for the two dimensional vector space. So that is, you just need two vectors in the set. Right, so let me go back to example. Um, let me go back to example one here. Right, um, so this set form a basis for a two-dimensional vector space. You need two vectors. Um, and in example three, right, so for two-dimensional vector space, you only need two vectors. Right, in three-dimensional vector space, you need three vectors. Um, three three-dimensional vectors. Um, so in example two and example four, you have a set of three three-dimensional vectors uh, to form a basis for a three-dimensional vector space. Okay. Um, so that's why um, if V has one basis with N vectors, then every basis for V has N vectors, right? So in example one, the standard basis have two vectors, then the non-standard basis also have two vectors, right? Um, so number six, uh, example six, I tell you um, this, um, some of the, uh, um, what do I want to say? So that's the example of which this set cannot form the basis for a vector space, right? So for this example, we consider three-dimensional vector space, right? So three-dimensional vector space so require three three-dimensional vectors, right? So in this case, you only have two three-dimensional vectors. 
So S cannot form a basis for a vector space, three-dimensional vector space. So S cannot form a basis for R3 because it has less than three vectors. Um, because it's have less than three vectors, it's not enough vectors to form a three-dimensional vector space. It cannot span three-dimensional vector space. Okay. So that is the first condition of the basis for a vector space already fail, right? The first condition is that S has to span the vector space. Now, in this example, S does not have enough vector to span the three-dimensional vector space. Okay. Now for B, example 6B, you have four three-dimensional vector, uh, vectors, and this is more than enough for um, the three-dimensional vector space, right? So in this case, S cannot form a basis for R3 because is has more than three vectors. Okay, so in this example six b, so it has enough, right? It has enough vectors to span or to form the entire three dimensional vector space. However, because you have an extra vectors, it's more than enough uh, because it's become redundant. Because when it's become re redundant, it's linearly dependent, just like uh, theorem two. And because it's linearly dependent, it fails the second conditions of the definition of basis for a vector space, right? Um, so that's the two examples just for us to see um, if one of the two conditions of def in the definition of a basis for a vector space failed, then the set of considerations cannot form a basis for a vector space. Okay. Um, so to conclude these two um, examples, um, I want to say that a basis for a vector space V um, need to have certain things. Um, <clears throat> that is um, the vector space, uh, basis for a vector space V has to have enough vectors to be able to span V. So the first condition is has to have enough vectors uh, to be able to spend V. Right. You have to have enough vectors to build the entire vector space. Right. But not so many. that is no longer linearly independent okay so you don't want it too few you don't want too many vectors just the right number of vectors so that you can form the basis for vector space okay now, moving on to the last theorem of the lecture. Um, in this theorem, we have three statements and they are uh, equivalent to one another. Um, so for any vectors V1, V2 up to Vn in n-dimensional uh, vector space, the following conditions are equivalent. So the set of the vector V1, V2 up to Vn, is a basis for Rn, um, then the set V1, V2 up to Vn is a spanning set uh, for Rn. And therefore, V1, V2 up to Vn is a linearly independent. Okay. 
Um, so that's it for this lecture. Again, in this lecture, we're talking about finding or determining the basis for a vector space. Um, in order to uh, show that a set is the basis for a vector space, you need to show two things. Right? The set is a spanning set, and the set is linearly independent. And to a set also considered to be a basis for a vector space is that you don't want too few of the vectors. Um, you don't want too many vectors in the set. You just want to have a, the right number of vectors in the set so that the set can span or help build the entire vector space and the set is linearly independent. Uh, that's it for me. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions.